Hi, welcome to Hub Bites. I'm Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist. Today I'll be taking you through the psychopharmacology of SSRIs or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. These are medications that are used in depression and anxiety. Names such as fluoxetine, sertraline, fluvoxamine, peroxetine, escitalopram, and citalopram come under the banner of SSRIs. So let's go through the mechanism step by step. The first thing we'll try to understand is what the neuron looks like. We know that there is the axon that carries nerve impulses from the cell to the other neurons. And we have what's called the somatodendritic area. Now this somatodendritic area is an important area in SSRIs. Why? Because we've got specific receptors called the 5-HT1A autoreceptor or presynaptic receptors that are situated in the somatodendritic area. Now these receptors act as a break on the neurotransmitter. So for example, if I activate the 5-HT1A receptor, no serotonin will flow because I've stepped on the break. So this is an important aspect to keep in mind as we go through the presentation. When we look at the axon terminal, we know that there is a presynaptic neuron, a postsynaptic neuron, and synaptic cleft. From the presynaptic neuron, the neurotransmitter moves through and gets released into the synaptic cleft to act on the postsynaptic. The next important thing is the role of CERT. CERT is a serotonin transporter. It is essentially a monomine transporter protein that transports serotonin from the synaptic cleft to the presynaptic neuron. So what does CERT specifically do in relation to serotonin? We know that serotonin is produced directly in the neuron. VMAT, vesicular monomine transporter 2, transports serotonin into vesicles and the vesicle then releases serotonin into the synaptic cleft. What CERT does is some serotonin is naturally reabsorbed through this reuptake pump. So think about it as a pump that sucks in serotonin and takes it back into the presynaptic neuron. Now what happens when we administer an SSRI? What an SSRI does is it blocks this reuptake pump, therefore blocks the reuptake of serotonin into the presynaptic neuron. Therefore there's lots of serotonin available in the synaptic cleft to act on the specific receptors. So let's look at first the action on specific serotonin receptors. We're going to cover three important ones first. The 5-HT2A, the 5-HT2C, and 5-HT3 receptors. The 5-HT2A receptor is situated in the limbic system, and therefore by activating the 5-HT2A receptor, it can result in anxiety. And this is a common side effect of the SSRI initial administration. Second, it is situated in the basal ganglia, the subcortical regions. These subcortical regions have connections to the frontal lobe. Therefore, when an SSRI activates the 5-HT2A receptor, it can have a frontal inhibitory effect on dopamine. So it inhibits frontal dopamine. And this is one of the reasons patients given SSRIs can have what's called emotional blunting. Next, the 5-HT2A receptor is also situated in the reticular activating system, which is a sleep area, and this is situated in the pons. Therefore, an SSRI can result in insomnia. Next, we look at the 5-HT2C receptor. The 5-HT2C receptor is situated lower down in the spinal cord and is responsible for sexual function. Therefore, an SSRI can result in sexual dysfunction. The 5-HT2C receptor is also situated in the appetite area of the brain and therefore an SSRI can result in anorexia which is decreased appetite. Next, the 5-HT3 receptor. The 5-HT3 receptor is situated in the hypothalamic nausea area and therefore an SSRI can result in increased nausea initially. The 5-HT3 receptor is also situated in the gut and therefore administration of an SSRI can result in diarrhea. So with all these side effects, how does an SSRI work? Initially what happens is these receptors are activated and one experiences side effects. 
But note that when, an, when a receptor is exposed to a neurotransmitter over an extended period of time, it will downregulate. So in case of an SSRI, these receptors take approximately one to two weeks to downregulate or desensitize, and therefore the side effects will wane. So now let's look at how the SSRI actually acts in terms of its efficacy. We know that the SSRI has blocked the reuptake pump and before an SSRI, the somatodendritic area looks like this, where there's not too much serotonin. By blocking the reuptake pump, we can see there's lots of serotonin in and around the somatodendritic area. Now we saw right at the start that the receptors that are situated here are the 5-HD1A receptors. What will happen is that initially, it will activate the 5-HD1A receptors, but because these receptors are autoreceptors, nothing's going to happen. There's going to be no serotonin release because we're stepping on the brake. But in about two to four weeks, which is a lag period for the onset of action of SSRIs, these receptors will also downregulate or desensitize, and therefore the brake is lifted and serotonin will start flowing and the neuron will start firing. So in summary, when an SSRI is first administered, it activates 5-HT2A, 5-HT2C, 5-HT3 and 5-HT1A receptor. But the 5-HT2A, 5-HT2C and 5-HT3 receptors are responsible for side effects until they downregulate and desensitize in approximately one to two weeks. The 5-HT1A receptor, which is the presynaptic autoreceptor, has been activated, but no serotonin has been released. But after a lag period of approximately two to four weeks, this receptor will also downregulate and desensitize, and serotonin will start flowing, and the neuron will start firing. So this is the psychopharmacology of the SSRIs. We will cover specific SSRIs in another video. I hope that you found this useful. Take care and stay safe.